you know, show you testimony, so I was like, yeah, for sure, I'll do it. So uh, kind of just funny way to go into it that God does work. Uh, he might work slow, but he works fast, too. Um, so, yeah, um, I am a sophomore slash retro freshman on the lacrosse team, um, and uh, I'm a marketing major here. Um, but I grew up in Dublin, which is a suburb, like 15, 20 minutes northwest of here. Um, and uh, if you know Dublin well, um, you know that it's a pretty wealthy community. Um, so I grew up just pretty well off. Um, I have one brother who's four years older than me. Um, and I actually got to be uh, best man in his wedding this past uh, summer, which is awesome. Um, and uh, great parents. Um, my dad is from Upper Arlington. My mom is from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and they have just done a great job of just loving me, um, supporting me, and everything that I've done provided for me. Um, but they aren't Christians. Um, we would go to church every once in a while, but it was more out of obligation, um, not because we wanted to. Um, so I would not say that I grew up in a Christian home. Um, I would kind of be the kid in the, the pew with my coloring book and never really knew what they were talking about. And I was actually, I was baptized in elementary school, but I didn't really know what that meant. Um, and so I kind of grew up with these Christian values around me, but I didn't know what a, a relationship with Jesus looked like. Um, from an early age, um, I kind of realized that I was gifted with athletic ability. Um, I played football, basketball, baseball, lacrosse, obviously, and you know, I played golf, and pretty much anything that I did, I, I, I did well, um, I excelled at. And um, you know, I was also good in school. Um, I had a lot of friends, I was well known uh, up through middle school. And um, my brother was the same before me. Um, so I kind of was sort of living in his shadow. Um, and there was a lot of expectations, a high reputation. And, you know, people thought I was going to be all of that. Um, and, you know, so going through middle school, I, my identity was, was in fulfilling those expectations, was in fulfilling what other people thought of me. Um, and that made me um, extremely kind of, I would say self-centered, um, very prideful, very competitive, not in a good way, not like because I wanted to win a, a lacrosse game, but I was competing because I wanted to look good in front of others and I didn't want other people to you know, look better than me, um, which is just extremely selfish. Um, and so that kind of made me really frustrated um, that um, you know, I was, on the outside I looked good, I was this all-American kid and you know, everyone thought I was something that I, I really wasn't and on the inside there was turmoil. Um, and um, kind of to kind of top it all off, um, by eighth grade, uh, I was addicted to, por to uh, pornography. Um, and um, that was kind of the turning point um, that I realized, like what Tom talked about last week, that you know what was was not necessarily what should be, and who I was was not necessarily who I should be. Um, and so fast forward to the end of eighth grade. Um, I got to go on my brother's senior spring break trip with him and his friends, and um, you know all of our families went, and, and that you know, that was fun and everything. But I got to see kind of how my brother and his friends interacted with each other, um, the way they loved each other, treated each other. They just seemed free, um, and it was contagious. I, I wanted that, um, and I came to learn that that was because of Jesus. Um, my brother had come to Christ three years before that. Um, he was about to go to college, and I was about to. You know, go, to, go off to high school, and I think there was this urgency in his mind to tell me about Jesus. Um, so when we got back from that spring break trip, I noticed kind of we were m more kind of, we were having more intentional conversations about Jesus. Um, and he ended up sharing the gospel with me um, over the last couple months of that uh, eighth grade year. And pretty much what he shared with me was that I was created by God, um, and God loved me. Um, but that I had sinned um, and I turned my back on God. And he taught me that there's this uppercase sin and lowercase sin. And lowercase sin is kind of just the sins that we have day, daily, um, whether it's lying or boasting or whatever. You know, whatever. Um, and this uppercase sin is this condition that I have in my heart um, that we all have, that we all inherit. Um, and Romans 3.23 says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And that, that crushed me um, because my whole life I had been thinking, you know, you know, I'm not as bad as him or I, I'm, I'm good. Like, I've got this all together. And just to come to learn that I'm on the same level as any, everyone else. Um, 
and um, like no one is better than anyone else, and I'm not better than anyone else. Um, and um, Romans six twenty three says, "For the wages of sin is death." So because of that sin, um, I was to die uh, like everyone else. And but the good news is, is the second half of that verse says, "For the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord." And my brother then shared with me that Jesus was sent by God. Um, and lived a sinless life um, and was crucified on the cross for my sins. And um, I never really understood why Jesus had to die. I didn't really understand like, why, why the innocent? Why, why does the innocent guy have to die? Um, and that was because um, like, you know, I have sin in my heart and if someone asked me to save them, that would be like the dead saving the dead. That's not possible. Jesus was perfect, meaning that he was alive um, and the living can only save the dead, so it had to be Jesus. Um, and that was, that was such good news. Uh, it was such good news, the fact that like my sins, past, present, and future, are taken care of. Um, and you know, my brother, he didn't stop there. He told me that three days after Jesus was crucified, he rose from the dead. Um, and proving that he is God, that he is who he said he was, um, and that he is deserving of worship. Um, and because he's alive, um, I get to have a relationship with him today. Um, so this kind of happened over a couple months span. Um, there was never like an aha moment where I was like, okay, I'm following you, Jesus. It was kind of a, a gradual thing um, where going into my freshman year, I was following Jesus. Um, so it's been about five and a half years um, since that. Um, and I wish I could say that it's been perfect, that I've been perfect, that um, everything has turned out great for me. And, um, but it hasn't. Um, you know, I've you know, I still struggle with pride. Um, still struggle with people pleasing and addiction. And um, you know, I have lost friends. I've lost family. Um, and you know, I've been through a bad breakup. I tore my ACL last year, um, which was extremely tough. Um, but what God has done is He's taken that extremely competitive um, and prideful and selfish kid and shown him that um, His identity is not in those things, not in the things of this world. His identity is not in what people think of, of me or um, you know, those expectations or my reputation or whatever, and, and show me that the gifts that he's given me on the field and off uh, are for glorifying him. Um, and so, um, you know, to wrap everything up, um, I would say that, that God gives me grace and mercy for my past, um, which means that all my sins are taken care of. Uh, because of Jesus on the cross. Um, he gives me peace in the present because I know that my identity is secure in Christ and in Christ alone uh, in heaven. Um, and so I don't have to worry about what other people think of me or you know, whether things are going to be okay uh, despite my circumstances or whatever. Um, and he gives me hope for the future um, because I know that he works for the good of those who love him um, and that no matter what happens, whatever comes across, um, I know that I'll be a bit more mature um, and just become closer to him. Um, so, yeah. Um, something that, um, just to leave you guys with some encouragement. Um, so a cool verse that's um, really been a big part of my, the last couple months of my life is uh, Lamentations 3, 22 through 24. I did have it memorized, but I didn't want to mess it up for you guys. Um, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies are never ending. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I will hope in him. And pretty much what that's saying is no matter what happens, whether you, know, you mess up or whatever, like we're going to be unfaithful to God, but the good news is that he is always faithful to us um, because his love never ends and because his mercies renew every morning. Thanks, guys. And good luck.